Boom, Mark, how are you, dear sir? Very well, how are you doing, Chris? Phenomenal, mate. Absolutely um, great to have you on the show. Um, gosh, I've been listening to or watching some of your stuff, and it's it's funny how we all get to the same parallels in life. <laughs> is it, part? Is it? Mark, let's go back to the beginning. Um, because you were training to be a pilot, a, a jet mm-hmm. pilot in the RAF, and, and you kind of had a bit of a sort of wake-up moment there, did you? I, yeah, you could say that. I mean, I spent from the age of 7 to 19 just obsessed with being a pilot, and um, I, I was in the Air Cadets when I was like, as, as soon as I could get in, because there was free flying, and I was a council house kid. It was the only way I was going to learn flying, and then I could fly before I could drive. I went solo when I was 16, I think, in Nottingham, in a, in a glider on a wet, cold morning. And then um, I got a six-born scholarship from the Air Force, then I got an RAF cadet ship, and I was going in. But my dad died when I was 17, which blew up a lot of things inside of me. And then I witnessed a couple of things in the RAF. There was a couple of suicides that were covered up. Well, one was covered up, um, which I was deeply disturbing of a friend of mine. and. Um, I was also <clears throat> seeing things in Germany that were not correlating with what was being said in the Daily Telegraph at the time, which ironically I ended up working at a few years later. And then um, I think really one of the, one of the, the pivotal the pivotal moment for me was when I'd got the Gold Duke of Edinburgh's award, um, which you're probably familiar with. And um, because of my dad's death it was a few I, it was delayed by the time i went to collect it so i went to collect it at james's palace with my mum we we're all dressed up i was in my RAF uniform and i was in there and prince philip came along and said so did all his shit and he said that he said I, I see you've joined the uh the uh the and he couldn't he didn't recognize the uniform and i was like 19 at the time and i was like what you're the commander in chief how do you not recognize this uniform and somebody had to whisper right Air Force in his ear and I, I looked at him and I gave him a dirty look and I was like, what? You know, my eyes were saying, what? And he was like, and he whipped his hand away. It was horrible. I can still feel his hand. And he just gave me the, he gave me the look like he wanted to kill me. But I, I just couldn't understand at the time. He'd probably just come up from the dungeons drinking adrenochrome. I don't know. But um, <laughs> back then I didn't know any of that. Uh, and I was just like, who am I working for? I mean, you know, the military, the guys in the military to me were heroes. I mean, you mentioned that in your podcast with um, that I was listening to this morning. And I thought that was really interesting because, um, you know, the Battle of Britain and everything else. I think it was uh, the Jeff Thompson interview I was listening to this morning. That was brilliant. Um, And it was such a massive disappointment to me, but I knew I had to move on. Now I know that I was there because I had to witness certain things in preparation for this time. I understand that now, but that back then I was gutted because all I, all I ever wanted to do was fly. And, you know, I was, I was, I was pretty good at it as well. I mean, sometimes I was shit, but then I was good at it as well. And uh, I got, I got a really high grade from um, the ex red arrows leader in my basic handling test, which I'm still very proud of, but I knew how to get out. So I, I resigned and they, they didn't like that. It took a long time, and I had to pay a lot of money to get out. Uh, yeah, is that? I don't yeah, that, keep, well, I that's a brave. Walking. That's a brave thing to do. You know, the bane of my life is people saying to me, "Oh, Chris, I was never in the military," as though somehow being in the military makes you like a special person or something. And and especially as a life coach, we we have to. Um, there's behaviour there that we have to work on. Stop comparing yourself to other people, yeah. especially as if you knew about the military. It's probably the most satanic job you can do in the UK. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean any disrespect to my former colleagues or my fellow veterans, um, but speaking as, ha, 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 English Veteran of the Year, I think I have, you know, I, I, I've earned the right to, to speak. And... When I joined up, Mark, we didn't have the internet. You didn't have the ability to research, for example, the events that you know may or may not have taken place in America a certain time ago. 
um, we were just told there's good guys and bad guys. And if you join the military, you're one of the good guys. And that's what we believed. And then we were subjected to a massive indoctrination because apparently if you go back to like the Battle of Gettysburg or some such historical event, they, they were digging up um, rifles. I suppose they were not much more than muskets. And they were finding that there were five rounds down the barrel. And they reckon it's because it's so in, it's so against our nature to want to take out a fellow human being that people were pretending to load and and then pretend, you know, that's so they'd end up with five in the chamber because they, they didn't want to hurt anyone. Whereas in our military, it's very much like targets will fall when hit. That What they don't say is fellow teenager who's done absolutely nothing to you uh, but has fallen foul of the international banking cartel who now wants his, his country's resources and also uh, play on the chessboard for their new world order, he will have his head blown off. Then his father will cry in the pub for the rest of his life. Did, you know, it, it, and that's the thing. You know, we didn't have the ability, Mark, to know that, if you join the forces, you're working for the military industrial complex and the military industrial complex is is the Rottweilers for the international, whatever we're going to call them today, cabal, cult, uh, international banking, fraternity, um, NWO, what, you know, Sabateans, <laughs> that's, uh, that's Sabateans and the old, uh, the old KM as we refer to them. Um, yeah. And so there's two reasons there that I speak out about this. One, stop comparing yourself to other people. The past doesn't exist, doesn't matter what decision you made when you were 16 or 18. That was like 30 years ago now, sir. I'm not talking to you, Mark. Um, you know, please leave it behind and go and be a good parent to your kids, which I'm sure you are. And that is how you become a good human being. You don't do it by aspiring to be John friggin Wayne in some deluded thing that you have no understanding whatsoever. But you've been massively brainwashed through Hollywood to believe they're the good guys. They're not. They're just very naive pawns on a huge chessboard that you won't understand until you learn esoterics or yeah. spiritual battle or you raise your vibration so you can access the information that's there but only the psychopaths currently access and there's wonderful beautiful enlightened people so <laughs> there you go mark how about that for talking over my guest <laughs> well no, that, that's great to hear um you know, when 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 I left, uh, I was actually saying this to my kids the other day. It was like they were like, "Why did you leave?" And I was like trying to explain. It was a, it was a, it was a real. I mean, my brainwashing was complete when I was um, when I was an air cadet. I remember rushing home on a Thursday night after parades to watch Question Time. I was desperate to keep up to t up to date with current events. Little did I know I was watching five paedophiles arguing bullshit on the BBC paedophile protecting network. I didn't know that at the time. And when Question Time, I'd say the story quite often, when Question Time used to finish, the BBC would play the national anthem and I'd stand to attention and salute the telly when there was nobody else in the room. I mean, I was all about Queen and Country, all about it. My, You know, all my family were bunting, you know, the Silver Jubilee, I remember that. And although I do remember saying to a friend's mum once I, I, on in 1977, and I turned around and I said, I wish she'd just die. And I got told off for it. So I kind of knew, I think I, my soul knew, but I had to go through this process and, and flying was, I just had dreams of flying from the moment I was born and um, I, I just wanted to do it. And everybody said I couldn't do it because I was a council house kid with a pot belly and I was too short. Uh, but I did, I did do it and I got in at a very high level and I got a very high grade and then I got out very young before I finished training. And I'm very grateful for that experience because it's informed my whole life ever since. And, and I did get a lot of good things from the military. I mean, I know how to build a bivouac. I know how to um, skin a rabbit. I know how to, you know, do piss on my boots when my feet are too cold. I mean, there's stuff that you do remember that's... And, and the guys were great. And, and I've got a lot of respect for anybody that puts themselves in the firing line. But I, I knew then that these wars, they just didn't make sense. And why would I want to bomb a village full of children and women? 
I mean, mm. I just couldn't, I couldn't, my soul couldn't bear the thought. So I left and I resigned and I remember writing the letter and, um, and then I got called to, to Cranwell and I had to sit in a room in the middle of, on a chair in the middle of a room with good cop, bad cop. I had the group captain there and I had the squadron leader there and one was going, rah, 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 I'm very disappointed in you flicking through my file. And the other one was going, oh, maybe you could go back packing for a year and find yourself, Mark, and come back in. I was like, oh God, got to get out of this. Um, so I, I'm glad I was there. I'm glad I met all these royal family family members and because you know what i've learned in the last 30 years is mind-blowing and and it's um i think it's our our duty as human beings to share this these experiences um in order for other people to understand the, the big picture because the mm. big picture is far 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 more important and far more interesting than being in the military for a bit it's the true warrior's journey mark hey spiritual battle well yeah i mean sometimes i do use the word spiritual i'm just actually filming i've been filming all morning because i'm i'm writing a book with um abby win right now um called um weapons of mass protection which is uh all about um how to you know spiritually protect yourself because the the for spiritual warriors in fact i talk about spiritual warriors light workers star seeds all of that kind of stuff now these these are part of my parlance which makes me laugh because sometimes things come out of my mouth and i'm like am i actually saying these things now this is crazy <laughs> do you find when people say like oh is jordan peterson chris is is he a good guy or you know and for me it's really similar i say well does he you know he he, he might be very well-meaning i'm sure he's great to go for a beer with but does he talk about spiritual battle does he understand that for example the scriptures contain allegory that you need to decode or is he sort of one of these ones that puts it all literally and that's kind of um <laughs> can't really make it much simpler than that have you are you got any thoughts in that area mark what jordan peterson or no i don't want to like single out people in particular not especially other content creators it's just you know, you get a lot of people go, yeah, this guy, Chris, he's really... And it's like, well, is he really? Um, you know, he's just blessed Israel or he's just worn a, he's worn his underpants on his face. Um, but my sort of marker is, you know, is he preaching the things that's needed to, en to enter paradise? And Well, um, you know, I, I talk, you know, I've, I'm a poet. I talk about, I've got, I've just opened a healing center. I'm trying to heal people donation based. So nobody misses out. I think I might have a way of building a whole new healthcare system, which we're working on right now. Grandiose statement, but it's possible. Um, I, I, I talk about love and peace and spiritual and going inside. Yeah. You know, I get called a shill. I get called a white supremacist, fascist, racist, homophobe. And <laughs> it's like, what, you know, it's, the conclusion that I've come to is quite simple. We're all doing our, I think we're all doing our best. Those of us with a soul are doing our best, right? Uh, whether that's going and helping your neighbor or getting up online and talking about stuff. And none of us are perfect and all of us have a history. And, you know, that's part of our journey. But when she, once you understand that you're the only thing in creation, then it all becomes a little bit simpler to understand because we're creating all of this all the time and you are all there is so everything in front of you including jordan peterson including the government including the things that have happened recently are all there for you and if you can see them all as a gift then 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 you understand that you're on a journey of your own because you chose all of this then actually you can start to enjoy it even though people are dropping dead left right and center you know if you go far enough into this you understand that you know death as we understand it isn't what we think it is anyway and um the reality is far 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 more interesting than anything we've ever been led to believe and i've just been given incredible gifts of 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 seeing things that have kept me really calm throughout of this like like the spaceship that came to visit me last year like the dragon made of light that flew over my head you know like the elementals that i see and wake me up in the middle of the night and stuff like that that, that kind of made me go hang on there's a lot more to this than meets the eye is that a bit of synchronicity coming in in there these these sort of i don't know what how you refer to them random events or 
I don't think there's anything random. Yeah, I think everything synchronicity is. I mean, the 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 the. I don't know about your personal. I don't like using the word journey or there's a lot of words I don't like using, but I'll use it for ease hmm. your own. You know, for me, I, my earliest memory was demons trying to recruit me in 1973 during the three day strike when Ted Heath, the paedophile Satanist was in charge of the country. Could you tell us about that? And also I think the old P word we might if okay, we say that. No, it's only that we'll get de the video yeah. gets demonetized and then I don't get sorry. paid. I said, I'd be a good boy. I'm then, sorry. Being, uh, then I kick the cat and then I'm, bloody <laughs> no mark it's fine i hate well, even I having to, to ask they do pop out I'll, I'll edit myself a little bit. well yeah i mean i i had a very uh i had a very strong connection to god as a child and um yeah i saw demons when, when i was a little boy in and what they, in what form mark in the 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 main form is that they came to me uh when my eyes were closed so they, I'd see their faces and I could hear their voices and they would just attack. Now, some people say that's nightmares. It wasn't. It was a very real thing. And I was awake and it was in the dark. But the 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 clearest memory that I kind of hid for a number of years. And when I first started talking about this, it was about three years ago. And I was I remember doing this show and I was I came off and I went, oh, my God, I've just talked about demons online. I'm ruined because I had a business at the time. And, but then I got thousands of emails from people saying, yeah, same thing happened to me and I don't tell anybody about it. So that's why I realized that it was important to keep talking about this stuff. But the, the clearest one was, um, I don't know how old you are, but 73 was the minor strike. And we had the three day week where there was no electricity for three days a week or it was maybe four days. I can't remember exactly. But my mum used to bring in a little tea co-op co tea light and put it next to my dressing table, my bedside table, mm -hmm. right? And I had a room like this and I was in the corner here. The window was there and the door was over there and the, 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 the candle was on. I remember sitting up one night and there was a shadow on this wall over here, which was completely normal, like a fuzzy shadow of me. But there was another shadow on the other side of the room, and, but it was perfectly black uh, and outlined. There was no fuzziness to it and I had two horns on the head. And I was sitting up and down doing this going, how do I get rid of these? What's this? What is this? You know, and that was a real, very, very real memory. And then there was like, I had men in, I had men in Jitus. My parents were told I was probably going to die. And um, I remember talking to somebody all the way through that lumbar puncture. But I kind of, and this happens to a lot of people with these experiences. They, they twist it to fit the reality that they think they're supposed to have. So for years, I thought I was talking all the way through this operation. But actually, about twelve. 13 years ago, I had a flashback where I was actually, I was looking down at myself having a conversation with somebody. So I was watching the operation. And who was I talking to? Because it wasn't a nurse. It was somebody. So, and then lots and lots of out of body experiences and, and seeing things and go, I was obsessed with graveyards and talking to ghosts. And, and I had all this, all these psychic incidences happening that you kind of brush off. You know, though, and we all have them, you know, when you think of a song and the song comes on or if you think of a friend and then somebody rings you and says they've just died or something like that you know how you, we brush them off and we kind of forget them but these have got stronger and stronger and stronger and coming back to the synchronicities I think it was about 2010 or so I just started seeing numbers 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 11 11 11 11 and then I was like why am I seeing this number and then you start looking into it and that's the beauty of this it's like being in a computer game or it's like being on an ayahuasca journey or on a mushroom trip you you're kind of going along and you're getting clues and you're either paying attention or you're not. If you are paying attention, then you're learning from it. And then you kind of move up a level and then you move up. It's like a computer game. You just keep moving up levels. And um, that's actually the fun part of this experience because I, I know that, um, you know, I, I, I try to uh, encourage people to find out who they really are by having past life regressions, looking into the work of people like Dolores Cannon, uh, reading the scriptures, reading the hidden books of the Bible, like the books of Enoch, le reading the law of one, uh, reading the, the Anastasia books, reading David Icke's books, reading books about the Tavis stuff. I've got them all here, you know, because I've done years and years and years and years of research trying to find out the answer um, because the truth is the thing that we're all looking for, but the truth is multifaceted. So no, so to coming back to your answer about synchronicities, loads of synchronicities, hmm. who's telling the truth? Well, there is no one truth. That's the other thing, because everything's here for you. So all of these, all of these, comp all of these characters, like including me, 
you know, or, or maybe there's things you don't like about me. And that means that, well, you, you know, people say, oh, I used to like him. And so they started talking about the carnivore diet. Then I went off him or I, or I, I used to like him. And then he, he did this and I didn't like him anymore. And it's like, well, that's fine because everything's kind of twisted together like this. So there's truths within lies, within truths, within lies, within every situation that we're presented with. If you look at the recent film, Cry for the Sound of Freedom, on one hand, an amazing film talking, talking about child trafficking and bringing that to the public's attention. On the other hand, somebody like uh, Dr. Amanda Vollmer in Canada, who I've got a lot of respect for, says this is just manifesting more of that. On the other hand, you've got this great actor who played Jesus with Mel Gibson. On the other hand, you've got pictures of him doing this over the years. You know, which is which? Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? And then people go, rah, 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 he's a bad guy, he's a good guy. But really, it's just there for you. Everything is there for you as an individual, for your own personal development as a, as a soul. And you're an eternal spirit. And once you understand you're an eternal spirit, death isn't what you think it is. And therefore, you should, you know, because if you, if most people who do plant medicine, for example, the first, you know, anecdotally that I've read a lot of um, and spoken to a lot of people, the first thing a lot of people experience is like, um, a kind of death you know one of my friends matt uh whose brother was in 9 11 jeff um was in the towers uh he he experienced being strangled to death that was the first thing that he experienced and i was like well that's getting rid of the fear of death is that the, that's is that the chap that lost his brother yes yeah, he's my best friend from school and jeff was my friend yeah from school. we've got to be really careful what we say mark yeah. this is one of the things they're really hot on but if that's the guy that I saw, he did this. I talked to Robbie Williams about this, actually. Yeah. That he, they, they posted bits. Uh, I can't even, I can't it's, say it. I think you get, his, yeah, his yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, oh, mate, just enough to bring. Yeah, well, I, I knew Jeff well, and uh, he was a wonderful guy. Wonderful and guy. when he gassed out, he was like, guys, I can't do this anymore. I've, yeah. I've, for 20 years, I've been trying to highlight the truth of what, and I'm exhausted. But, oh. oh, well, I was over Matt's shoulder all the way through that. And there's a uh, can I share a screen? Uh, no, don't do that because we're on uh, studio. OK, um, well, if you look up, if you look up and share your screen mm. uh, on Google. If you look up. Um, what's it called? Hurricane Matthew. OK, this, this will freak you out. So as part of my journey with Matt, um, I ended up, he ended up inviting me to go to Gitmo in 2015, 16. There was a, there was a court, uh, a, a court thing that he was invited to. And he got flown from London to Washington, then Washington down to the, the spa, as we call it, over the Gulf of Mexico. And what, and he, and they narrowly avoided a, a very serious hurricane that could have wiped out that plane, but didn't somehow. And it was called Hurricane Matthew, and his name's Matthew. And if you look at the picture, the satellite picture on Google images of Hurricane Matthew, you'll see a demon's face in the picture. Yeah, bloody hell, yeah. I don't know if you can share the screen. Yeah, I'm, show I'm showing it to everyone, to everyone um, now. Yeah, um, I mean, it's stuff like that that seems <laughs> insane, but, you know, that is a demon's face. Yes, um, I had. A, can I just tell you my um, my my plant journey? I've only ever been on one. Well, unless you you count the old devil's lettuce. Um, <laughs> I've not heard it called that in years. <laughs> oh, there's that one. There's also the other one. What's it called? The um, oh salvia. Oh bloody hell! Can't even talk about it, folks. But whoa <laughs> um um no i was gonna say i did i did my sort of you know amazonian experience fairly recently and i'm not i'll be honest i don't think i'll be doing that stuff again it served a purpose um i kind of knew what i was in for and i knew it would be pretty nasty because that's kind of my experience with anything hallucinogenic and uh Going back to what you're saying about the the demons visiting you, mm. how can it be, right, that when you shut your eye, when I shut my eyes, and it wasn't the whole time, some of it was quite in, mellow and enjoyable, and then it would suddenly start to phase into, oh, right, this ain't going to be, 
this is not going to be pleasant. <laughs> and I'm shutting my eyes. And I could see these, like, triffid, like, like entities just going like that. And then there was blood dripping off bits of, like, meat. And, 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 and when I Googled, I was doing a, a thumbnail for a video, and I Googled, like, some, you know, demonic image. Bloody hell, one of the ones that come up was what I saw. That mm-hmm. triffid like thing coming like that at you. And, mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm not even gonna stretch my brain mark to think how how does that I mean how I could have seen like cream cakes coming at me. Bloody lovely, you know, or the Michelin man, I wouldn't have minded that. Or, you know, or I'm thinking of the marshmallow man, aren't I? On uh, Yeah, Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters. You know, I, not a problem. But Mr. Th- Stay Puff. <laughs> yes. This wasn't Mr. Stay Puff. This was no. Mr. Bloody Nasty. Yeah. And it was quite good. I, I learned a lot from that experience. I've just learned not to do it again. <laughs> no, no. Well, they're they're here for us as well. Hmm. that's the thing you know and we create them and this is what i liked about your interview with jeff um because i i agreed with that and and the, the whole point of this is that we are the creators and they understand that that's why we've been hijacked but you know and we're coming out of it and this is the great awakening not the great re- reset uh, but i do caveat that by telling people that i'm an apocaloptimist and um i think this is all about truth unveiling for you as an individual and for us collectively. And some of us are here to sort of just hold people's hands because some of it's going to be quite upsetting. Yes, sorry, Mark, I'm not being rude to you. I'm looking at the live chat that's... Um, <laughs> um, yes, I, yes I, I get your... I take... I can, can completely agree. I saw it and I thought, Chris, it's just telling you, mate, you've got a few things left to work on. That's it. Yeah. You got a few things left to work on, and I'll tell you what, I've done a bloody good job since then. It 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 was a moment in time that goes, Oi, come on, mister, you're fifty four now. Certain things, you know, you should just just exercise a bit of restraint, a bit of willpower, do the right thing, think about other people instead of yourself. And uh, lo and behold, it's um been bloody brilliant, Mark, you know. Oh, it is brilliant. I mean it's in our language. You know, you've got to face your demons. It's there. It's there from, you know, from the beginning. I mean, things like I got a good vibe off somebody. I mean, we're, we're frequency. It's in our language. We, we, we inherently know this. But because of the separation uh, that they try to create with us and locking us off by calcifying our pineal gland with fluoride and stuff like that, they, they, um, it's kind of like you, you get. It's kind of like you're starting this race with a brick tied around your ankle, and you spend most of your life trying to get rid of that brick, and then learning how to run without without it. And and you, and if you if you take if you take a, an impediment off somebody, they miss it for a bit, and and it you know because we get a t- it's Stockholm syndrome for the brick. You know we have that. That's the issue, and and the whole of the last few years has been showing us that we we are. We have been treated like children our entire adult lives and we act like children. If you treat adults like children, they behave like children. But if you treat them like adults, they start behaving like adults. And all of this is really about us growing up as a species, I think, when we realize we have the power, we are sovereign individuals, and there's a much, much better way of... Because most people here on Earth know it's no intrinsically something's wrong. You Don't know, they call that Pla- Plato's cave? Yeah, yeah, the allegory of the cave. I, I, when I started my channel, I played that all the time. There's a great claim animation of it mm. uh, on YouTube that everybody should go and watch because it's just a. You can go read it if you. you know, we're not a reading society anymore, but go, that clay animation is fantastic because that's exactly what it's been like for me. I've been shouting about this stuff for years. I've been thrown out of parties. It affected my health. I drank too much. I took drugs. Because you go know, coping with all this stuff. Because I've been waking up since 1989 properly, uh, accelerated when what's it happened with the two doodars, and um, as it did, that was a big wake up for a lot of people. And then obviously in the last three years, it's just been like accelerating, an accelerated thing. And it's it's a real, I see it as a real privilege to be here, and to be 
you know sharing these stories and and talking about this stuff because it, it, every every time we do that we're helping somebody else uh, find out who they are and it's not about being right it's not about lecturing people and it's not about being a guru i keep saying to other people just because we chose to speak out doesn't make us any better than anybody else so this we're all the, we're all exactly equal because we're all part of one consciousness and that unity consciousness is the thing that's rising and the earth is rising at the same time and we're going from one frequency to another frequency and we're passing through some pretty nasty stuff in the fourth dimension and then our bodies are, for the first time are going to be meeting our souls and over souls and monads and that's what ascension i think actually means and that's what i'm experiencing and a lot of people that i know are experiencing and some people you know i was explaining this to my son yesterday you know some people for, for centuries have seen fairies and ghosts and can speak to the other side. I mean, that, that's all real, you know, and, and, you know, and we do, even people who are hardened cynics will go and see a medium or get their cards read because they want to know the future and they're obsessed with the future. But like you said, the past is gone. It doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist yet, but we, you know, all we've ever had is the present moment, but we, we can change the future because time doesn't exist as well because we're existing, but that's another story. But mm -hmm from this perspective we can we can have a much better outcome and it doesn't take a lot of us to do it so if you look at um a petri dish in a biology class with one set of bio bacteria in it you can introduce a new bacteria like a new thought and then it can go and then suddenly the whole thing will change and it's similar with a caterpillar inside um a cocoon it becomes it doesn't gradually turn into a butterfly it instantly turns into a butterfly because of a cell inside there called the imagio cell which is where the, we get the word imagination from so that instant transformation is something we can all achieve and we can do it by you know you sharing your thoughts the way that you have has affected the consciousness of the people that have watched you and and it's for me it's frequency matching I yeah. like this it's man, frequent. folks. I like this man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it hit, and all of this stuff came in in a way that I, I started saying all this stuff. And I was like, where is this coming from? And then somebody said to me, you're Claire Cognizant. And I went, what, what the fuck's Claire Cognizant? <laughs> I've never met her. Who is Claire Cognizant? And, um, and then I realized, oh, yeah, I'm getting all this information all the time. And then it just comes out of my mouth. And then I go, where did that come from? And, and it's just being tapped in. And we've all got this ability. We've all got this the ability to do it. We've always had it. And it's just trusting it. Because this is all about trusting. And I use the word God um, because I reclaim the word. I mean, for years I was saying source and universe. But, you know, after my dad died, I was, I was basically an atheist for 30 years. I just turned my back on all of that. And I became a socialist. And I became, I was on the marches. And I was doing all of this stuff in my 20s and stuff. And and then it all came, you know, came flooding back that actually that's not right. Uh, you, you know, communism is is so same thing as socialism. Politics is absolute nonsense. It's all theater. They call it the theater of politics for a reason because all actors, all of them. And you know, and and I want to create a better world. And, I, and when this all kicked off, the recent stuff, I just I knew the NWA was coming. I'd known about it for years. I'd read the project for the new American century. I'd read the protocols of the elders of Zion in 1999 in the Curry house in Manchester. I knew, I knew all of this stuff was on its way. And when it came, I was like, shit, here it is. And then, you know, I've just been doing what I'm told ever since, which is following that connection to whatever you want to call it, which I, I use the term God because everybody knows what that means, but mate, uh, I'm still, I'm still out with a God thing. I, to my yeah. to myself now, I'm I'm quite um, I'm quite um, content with you know I'm at ease I'm at ease with it I I I I get like just like what you said I've I I own it now. The only yeah. reason I shy away from it, Mark, is that had someone talked to me in terms using like God, hmm. I would have just been like oh. Religi yep. religious nutcase walk away yep. walk away so i just use uni i just use power energy universe um but you know i guess it doesn't matter does it if we're all on our own journey no it doesn't and i you know i've spent a lot of time reclaiming words right so i toured america last year on the truth tour two and i was the only british guy to do the whole tour it was 17 cities 
thousands of miles in 31 days. We drove around the whole bloody country and we went to all the dark spots around America, which were chosen by Lewis Herms, who runs Screw Big Gov over there, as the democratic spots that he wanted to go into the democratic spots and see if people, you know, what we were actually doing was light work, but we didn't realize it. And we're halfway around, a healer that I know in the Appalachian Mountains sent me a map of the portals in America that matched the map of the places that Lewis had chosen perfectly. And the last gig we did was in Anaheim in a hotel opposite Disneyland, which is like demonic HQ, right? And um, I can't remember why I'm telling you this story. There was a, there was a purpose for it. It's gone. Well, could you, could we go? Um, I'm just getting a few slides up that I found really interesting folks. Um, but yeah, fascinating. Very quick anecdote. So I woke up uh, in the depths of chronic addiction, Mark, you know, when I couldn't really go lower without dying, basically. Yeah. Um, I suddenly learned that I had to start loving myself. I had to start loving that little boy who didn't have the easiest of times. Same here. You know, at four years old, three years, you know. And I was still, like, doing to him what adults had done to him. And he is me, if that makes sense. And I had to be like, Chris, you know, you can blame everyone for what happened to that little Tucker, but, like, you're doing it to him now, mate, so fucking get a grip and stop doing it, and or at least do it less. Um, and, that, and, and that was that. And in that moment, I, I made a decision, stop being a victim. Mm -hmm. Seize the power. And that is the moment I would say I got the force because I woke up the next day and even though I felt ropey, or I, in fact, it was about a week later, I stuck to my resolve. I spent 10 quid on, on a bag of stuff and that was it. I didn't spend all my benefits like I usually did. And when it was gone, it was gone. And I woke up in the morning. I felt a bit rough on a bit of a come down. I threw open the curtains and I said, morning, son. Thank you so much for this life. Thank Brilliant. you. And in that moment, as I turned around from the curtains to go and make a cup of tea, not a line, not a syringe, a cup of tea, which was just, I, I knew something had changed. My, I knew my life, I, it was never going to be the same again. I, I didn't need to compare myself to no one. I didn't need to aspire to anything, anyone, any achievement. I just had to believe in me and the universe was going to take care of the rest. And that was it. And then, ironically, the old Scooby Doobies in New York and Washington happened. And so, yeah. so I woke up after becoming enlightened. Work, work that one out. <laughs> so, how, how, uh, j j j just to recap. So, those events, obviously, I'm guessing they, you know, they they were a big eye opener for you too. And do you think it was the demonic thing that got you on the sort of spiritual journey, well, or, or whatever we're going to call it, the the enlightenment journey? Well, we we are spirits. We are spirits having a human existence. Ghosts mm. in meat suit. Somebody coined that term, which is why my show was originally called Adventures in a Meat Suit, but. <laughs> When I started it, I mean, this is a biblical time that we're in. We are in the end game of a massive spiritual war multidimensionally. And things are being revealed to us on an individual basis, on a kind of need to know basis, because if you get it all revealed too quickly, it's out there in the field and then our enemies use it against us. So we are all being kind of teased into this with, and, and certain information is being trusted with certain different spirits and different people to achieve different objectives and for me i've always had this image this vision of a, like a massive billion piece multi-dimensional chessboard and we're all all pieces on it and we're all being moved around precisely as is required to achieve the outcome which is effectively the golden age which is what i i have had visions of this golden age which is full of beauty and crystalline buildings and harmony and we have all these abilities that we'd forgotten about i mean they tell us that 97 percent of our dna is junk and I, I i dispute that i say it's just been turned off and it's being it's being activated and that you know i'm picking this up from people all over the world 
that their psychic abilities are coming online. There are people now that can levitate and, and bilocate. And, you know, I'm looking forward to being able to fly personally without the aid of an airplane, or I do like flying machines enormously. Um, but this, 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 this utopian world is, is the original blueprint of, of humanity. And I think that's what we're heading towards and the journey of getting there is basically un, unattaching ourselves from all of this crap that's been put on us which has really tethered us and because this this world that we uh think we exist in which we're creating is holo it's a holographic reality um that is really a farm and uh you know david ike talks at length about louche and that's fear and anxiety energy that they feed off from the fourth dimension and the archons and the reptilians and all of that. And all of that stuff's real. I got and, one for you. Yeah. So, how was it for you moving? I always try and explain it on my channel that fourth dimension is people that have left left third dimension consciousness um, because they realise something's wrong in this narrative on the planet, you know? You end up wearing your underpants to go to Tesco, <laughs> wearing your underpants on your face. You kind of know something's not quite right anymore. And then I explain that, that you become fourth dimension. So you become, quote, unquote, awake. But awake is still in the matrix because you're using all your old strategies and your, your indoctrination for 50 years or however old you are to try to make sense of this new information. So you're like, right, it's Get rid of Tony Blair. Let's get Boris Johnson in. That 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 will do it. You know, or I mean, sound of freedom is a good one. You know, trying to fix a prob problem that's born out of so many issues. Certainly, a lack of spirituality, materialism. Da 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 da. Um, putting all your chips on one square and thinking a film will fix it. I've had conversations about that. You know, with with people. I hate to break your bubble. This. If they didn't talk about spirituality, it's 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 entertainment. And from fourth to fifth, where in fifth dimension you leave this meat suit behind or you realize um, it's just the universe experiencing itself subjectively and that everything is, uh, according to our friend Nikola Tesla, is energy, vibration and frequency. And therefore, we need to access that realm like you very well um, put it across, Mark, in order to make our changes in life. I'm just interested because, oh, wow, you're going to have Tesla, to... Tesla Violet Ray machine from 100 years ago. They got they got rid of all of them. Oh, Using... my God. I know. Heals everything. Incredible. I think um, Clive DeCarle's probably got one of those, hasn't he? Got this off, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely chap, Clive. Oh, so he's great. All I was going to say is, you and me, we're not adverse to you know the odd cuss word, are we? And getting a getting a bit frustrated. And have you noticed how you're leaving that behind? Well, I'm trying not to swear on this show because it's YouTube, <laughs> and I've had this conversation with my kids this week because I I did a lot. Of, that's what I was saying about the American tour. I got told off uh, a lot for swearing because it's America. Bastards. I was it. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I was going to say. I love, you know, America for me is the front line. That's the country that's, if that goes down, the whole thing goes down. So that's why I went and I wanted to see it for myself. And I did not have a single bad interaction with anybody, even really woke people in Minneapolis. They were lovely. And, um, but I was in Florida in Clearwater and I was about to go on stage and this woman came up to me, a lovely woman. She said, uh, yeah, you realize you lost a Christian base yesterday. And I went, Why? She went, oh, you're cussing. Do you care? And I went, no. And I went on and I swore even more. Because not to annoy her, but to just show people that a lot of, like swearing, for example, is a kind of part of the trap. You know, all language that we're speaking now is spelling. So we, we, we that's why it's called spelling, right? Because it, mm -hmm. it casts spells. And they changed the language to fit uh, the narrative to well to get us to create our own prison so so all the pc stuff that's happened since the late 80s that that now has become wokeism or whatever you want to call it is really a, a prison for your mind it, it's fascism dressed up as manners okay so you, it, it's just like making a smaller it's like newspeak in 1984 there's things you can't say 
and you know common sense goes out the window everything gets inverted but it's always it's ever thus that way so you know i say to people that all the poetry that i came out with over the last three years it came from above and it did it just got channeled through me and i just had to get it out quickly and some of that involved f youtube or using the c word i mean the book this book has is the only book with 27 pages dedicated to a word that i'm not going to say but i can show you <laughs> you know I've, I've called them what they are yes I like to use so, the I like to use the cuss words. I think it's just um well, it's just reclaiming the language because you know that word in the 14th century meant a, a loyal and honest friend. You know that they they changed the meaning of these things. It's like the word occult just means hidden. So all of this knowledge held in the mystery schools and by the masons and everything else, it's occult but only has power when it's hidden. It's like if a spell is cast upon you, if you know what that spell is and you understand it, you can dispel it very, very mm. easily. That's why they hide it. But they hide it right in your face. So it's biggest, too close um, to see. Yeah, biggest spell at the moment is the word past. Have you noticed? You talk about newspeak and, and, and language being a spell. It used to be when I grew up, if someone died, they fucking died. It was like fine. Oh, yeah. Ab absolutely cool. My dad died last week. Now it's... My dad passed. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm laughing at just the utter gutlessness of people to, to just copy that word because you heard someone else say it rather than just... Because it's a spell. It's the sissifying of society. It's the getting people to be all... What if I say the word die, I might like offend offend people and so i'm going to take the easy because i'm so self-conscious because i'm ego driven and i'm in a low vibrational state i worry what people say so i'm going to say past because disco dave says past and I'll, I'll just play it safe and go with what disco says yes i fucking hate it mate you know i hate it as well there, it me, there we are fourth dimension folks i dipped into the fourth dimension <laughs> i got angry <laughs> but that's okay because we're actually i think we're exist well we are existing in multiple dimensions all the time anyway but uh we're becoming more aware of these other dimensions as we're going through it so a lot of the time i'm in fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth density and then i'm but i'm still in 3d as well at the same time so i was having that conversation this morning part of my work is, be, is to be pragmatic about where we're at and to just get people less resistant you know less um suckling on the nipple of the state uh and, and to you know create income streams that are independent to grow their own food to just be sovereign for their health for their wealth for their thoughts for their emotions and everything else and doing that as an idiot you know in a kitchen is what i said describe myself as when i first started this because i did it in my kitchen and i was like you know, I'm just the same as everybody else. I've done stupid things. I've drunk too much. I've taken too many drugs. I've done, I've upset people I didn't mean to. You know, we've all done the same things because we've all been demonically possessed. So exactly, you know, and isn't it the parasites and cleaning yourself, cleaning your blood, and looking into ways of being healthy using frequency and red light? And you know, I've, this healing center I've got is using oxygen to heal people. Oxygen, you know, it's not. It's not Wu Wei. It's oxygen. Mm. Um, is 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 just simple. It's it, we're going back to a simpler time when we stop. We do the opposite of what the governments tell us. Have, they've been telling us shite for years. Have you found, Mark, that less is more? Yeah, of course it is. Massively. I you know, I eat like a sparrow now. I'm actually the same weight I was when I was when I joined the Marines at eighteen and. When I, when I go running, I'm just like a whip it. I'm 54 for crying out loud. Most people are giving up running by the time they're, they're bloody 18. Get, well, you, you know, know what's happened to me? There's a there's a hill near here, quite steep. Three years ago, I would have to stop halfway up. That catch my breath. Now I'm running up and running down it. And the only thing that's really changed is my water. Well, and my food. My my food and water. Well, I've actually done loads of things to be honest, but it's not like I've been to the gym five days a week. I've just changed the inputs i've got mm. clean alive water coming in i'm not eating bread i'm not eating vegetables i'm not eating before one or two o'clock in the day so i'm fasting every day and just these simple changes can have a huge effect 
on the debris. I was just talking about it earlier. You know, inside of each of our cells is debris and parasites. These are the things that we can get rid of very, very easily because they're. I think they're part of a technology that keeps us in the grid. And oh, massively. Can, yeah, and yeah. if we can detach those from our... I mean, you look at the work of Dr. Jennifer Daniels. I won't mention what she talks about, but she got kicked out of America for discovering a parasite cleanse that's over 100 years old that everybody used to do once a year, and it's cheap mm -hmm. as chips. I mean, we just rediscovered a a Chinese uh, technique called slap. I, I don't know what it's called. I call it slapping, which is basically, this is your heart and lung area here. You do this for five minutes hard. Mm. It brings all the debris, dead blood cells, all the crap that we're breathing in. We can't avoid it. it you know, we're talking about brake dust. We're talking about the particulates, nano-sized particulates from the rubber tires on the road. We're talking about the things that get sprayed in the sky. All this stuff is inhabiting our body. If we could remove it, you get a clean vessel. And if you clean the blood as well, you've got, you know, and, and structured water solves that problem like this. Mm. That's why all the water is so bad. I live in the West of Ireland. It's the most fluoridated water on earth. Why? What does fluoride do? It's a neurotoxin. What does it really do? Calcifies the pineal gland. What's the pineal gland? That's your telephone line to God. The universe. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, that's that's what we got to understand. The spiritual war manifests itself in the 3D in these poisons that are all around us, even the even the paint on the walls is poisoning us. Mm. You know, it, it's a, it's, there's a man I met about 10 years ago called um, F. William Engdahl, and he wrote a book called Full Spectrum Dominance, which is a really, really good book for everybody to read. I talked about it on my show a few times. Um, the, you know, every single aspect of this prison that we're in, this farm that we reside upon, uh, is designed to keep us sick and ill so that they can feed off us. And we're breaking free. And that's the good news. Well, that's brought us nicely into um, um bum bum. Folk, friends at home. Oh, sorry. Friends at home. Could we get some um, likes, please, for Mark's wonderful guesting or co-hosting of my show? Um, if we can get some likes and some subscribes, that will be absolutely um, wonderful. Because as I always say, it's not a lot of people talking about this kind and this is the gold i've had so many people on my podcast mark and they're all very welcome because i just like to talk to people i think everyone's got a story i literally yeah. could talk to my postman and i'd have just as just they're as good as <laughs> yeah just as good a chat chatting to him as i would some sas legend or some rock celebrity but um Having said that, though, these conversations, this is just esoteric knowledge. This is stuff that's bloody been hidden for thousands upon thousands of years that only the elite few have managed to decode. And yet here, and I, here is Mark and I giving it all away for free. <laughs> well, that's the thing. And finding it out, is, we've already got it in our DNA. I think it's already in us. All we're doing is uncovering something that was hidden. And, and that's... I don't know. That's like playing hide and seek. It's fun. If you look at it like that, it's fun. Absolutely. It's like finding, you know, what's that game you do with the kids when you hide the presents around the garden? It's, it's that. And it, and it's like every every piece of knowledge to me is a new present. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Where's the next one? You know, and I want to just want to keep going and consuming that and, 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 and treating it as fun. Because when we treat it as fun, our frequency is higher. When our frequency is higher, that's the other thing. Laughter and free, they can't latch onto it. Right. And they use the, the debris and the cells to like to latch on to us. But we, we can throw them off very, very easily. Mm -hmm. And while I'm listening, I know it's your podcast, but I'd love it if you played one of my poems. Chris, would you do that? For yes. Your it's not got copyright on or anything, is it? No, I wrote it all. It's all me. Um, it's if you type into YouTube, I see you. Oh, I, yes. Yes. And that's going to bring us on. Mark. I just want to close because we've been speaking about an hour now. I just want to close by talking about the, uh, you know, the big club, as I refer to them. Um, so we're talking to Sabbateans or I just say KM because I got a feeling certain platforms going to change its rules to make. Well, that, that rhymes with Hazarian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's the one. Um, so. <laughs> let me just get that one up. Yeah, I mean, th this poem, um, it, it doesn't contain anything contentious, uh, although it's it's coded like all of the poems that I've written. And this one's really for everybody watching this that's ever felt 
isolated or alone or um am i getting get it sorry i'm mark i'm interrupting you it's just am i getting it up on youtube we've got yeah it's on youtube it's not on my i think i mean i've got a new youtube channel with five thousand because i started again but um you'll find it on abby Wynn's channel uh if you type in icu mark atwood so yeah like if you can um give me all your links as well mark obviously i've got your youtube and your um twitter and i'll i'll put them below yeah, I mean, mate, I mean, I'm on Rumble, bitch. You, I've got this new YouTube one I've just started again, but I can't Spot. do anything. You know, all my uncensored stuff is on the markatwardshow.com, Twitter slash Mark Atwood. I've got a Telegram channel, the Mark Atwood Show. Anybody can, you know, engage with me there if they want. So I'm playing I See You, a poem by Mark Atwood. Hopefully. Yep. Let me just get it up. Said the actress to the bishop. <laughs> can't resist those jokes. I love some parts of British humour, you know. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, you can take the boy out of Britain, but you can't take Britain out of Britain. Here we go, matron. <laughs> I see you twinkling in the sky, shimmering in Van Gogh's eye. Sparkling as the starseed you really are. You've come so far. Born onto the facsimile earth, all memories erased. Not one iota of your talents, of the children you once raised. I see you. You never felt accepted. You never felt the same. Your friends and family alien often seemed insane. They pointed fingers at you they laughed behind your back. Whilst you were dancing with fairies and angels, you were on a different track. I see you. You felt alone, you did your best. You smiled through all the pain. They beat you and abused you. They knew you'd come to end their reign. As winters came and summers left, the leaves fell over years. The spirit voice inside your soul grew louder through your tears. I see you. They broke you down, they tricked you, they stabbed you through the heart. They feasted on your effervescence, they relished you apart. They stole your youth, they stole your money, convinced you they were right. But every time they ripped you open, closer came their night. I see you. Like the caterpillar at the end of life, entombed inside the cocoon, the hero's journey final act when all seems certain doom. Those belittle words of faith and belief diminish amidst the noise, yet you hold on, you won't let go. For the battle, you are poised. I see you! Deep, deep down, you hear the cry. In remembrance, you answer, yes. The fight was laid before you, to come is yet the best. Besmirched, belittled, tossed aside, you nearly lost your way. Letting go of all beloveds, you tried your truth to say. I see you. As the veil it dissipated, as all the solids melted, the remnants left fought their way to sovereignty, once doubted. You stood your ground, you found your power. Your strength became unbounded. For you are the warrior child of this world. In your brilliance, our future founded. I see.
Boom. Well done, mate. That's quite... Um, got, I was getting lost there. Getting lost in in, um, in your prose. Well, there's a little joke at the end that most people would miss to snap you out of it. I don't know if you saw that, but um, thanks. It's, um, it, was, it was written for all of us, really. Yeah, what was the little joke? Sorry, did I miss that? Yeah, you have to play it till the end. It's just a... I try to put jokes in there. <laughs> the series. Oh, is it in the credits? Yeah, it's at the end of the credits. It's like one of those things at the end of a Marvel film. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. Is it a scene after the credits or is it something? Yeah. yeah. Don't think there's anything. Don't worry about it. You don't have to play it now. I think whichever channel I've played it on, they haven't. They haven't got oh, it. They, well, if well, yeah, people always miss it. But if anybody wants to watch that, it's, it's on, on the on. it's on the Divine Matrix. Oh, is it? I don't know where that is. Yeah, um, they, they. It just the credits just end. Oh, do they? Some yeah. Buggers. Well, go the markoutshow.com. You can see the full version there, and um, there's hundreds. Of, no, not hundreds. There's loads of poems there, and uh, yeah. Thanks, Chris. No problem. So, just one last thing. I just wanted to cover is, you know, we talk about the matrix, we talk about becoming awakened, and then we talk about taking that step to enlightenment. In And the terminology I use, folks, is, pro- is, is open to interpretation. Um, but I wanted to talk about the Sabbateans and the, and the KM, because even though we, you know, we create our world with, by going within... There is that passage, I believe it's in the Bible, says you still have to give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, meaning we still have to live in this realm. And it's all right going within, but if someone wants to come through my front door tomorrow and let's just say subject my family to a medical process, like, yeah, I like to think I'm going to, knock them out of my front door faster than they came in. <laughs> 100%. Um, meaning that, you know, there is a, the, the spiritual thing get, can go so far in depending on circumstance. Um, and so one of the things I do, Mark, without trying to get negative about it, because it's a terribly dark e- energy attached to it, is I make people aware of these these um, satanic groups that have come through the ages yeah me too Uh, and i've had this argument for a long time and i wrote another poem called we see you three years ago which people can also go watch which is about them i i saw that one this morning yeah that's why probably i was a bit confused then yeah yeah they're like partner sister poems um and that one i mean that that's been seen millions of times it's been played at sra rallies around the world uh, Ricardo Bosa used it to open a rally in Australia, and you know it's, it, it all came from God. And it was after seeing the ra- the rally outside the BBC three years ago, which I hate with a passion. But um, I've had this argument for a long time because there's a very well known person who's a spiritual leader, if you like, and she was she told me years ago. She said you got to stop talking about all this stuff, and I was like, really, I don't agree because I know it's an inside job, but some of us have a job of trying to get everybody else to see them because at the end of the day people need to understand a fundamental thing and that is that 22,000 children have gone missing every single day for at least 70 years that's a billion children one child going missing by these and being used the way these people use them is is too much and I don't care if they kill me. I'm not. Gonna, I'm going to do everything I can to stop that. And you know what have I got? Well, poetry is quite powerful, and it's not the same as a gun, but at least it's helping. And I think I think it's everybody who understands this and looks into it and really understands it to go forward and get people to face this because the, you know where where we're living right now is was prophesized by the hopi and it's called the, the time of the eagle and the condor when the eagle and the condor come together and they're allegories for the dark and the light and the, the you know the more light you shine the more darkness shows up so we 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 have to i think personally we have to process all of it and face it all the same as we have to face our own demons we have to face individually we have to face our demons collectively 
as a species, in my opinion. I've got the strength to do that, and I hope everybody else has as well. Yes, I think it gives you a bit of immunity, does it not? If you, if you, I mean, fear is what they feed on. Um, also, you and I, we haven't signed up to their agenda, so we're not like it's not like we're whistleblowers or anything. We, no. you know, we, and it seems the rules of their game are, um, you know, it. it I was going to say it's a fair fight. It's clearly not a fair fight, but they, no, they, we're, we're way we're way stronger than them. They know that we have love and compassion and forgiveness, and they're they're our best weapons. So, do you think then? I I've got this theory. I think years of inbreeding into these money lines or bloodlines is is has it's well, it's not even a theory. I I got approached by an anthropologist the other day, and a, a, a sort of historical scientists you could say that say Chris like I've been on this for 20 years now there's a certain gene that is deficient in these individuals um because I've been saying Mark they clearly don't know love and empathy if you, well you know. empathy is taken out of them ritualistically if you look at the Bullingdon Club you'll see um pictures of Johnson and that idiot that was Chancellor now uh, editor of the Spectator and the Evening Standard and on all of those others uh, burning £50 notes in front of homeless people, sticking sparrows up their ass, um, having sex with pig's heads, as David Cameron allegedly did, and was depicted on that TV show um, that Charlie Brooker created. I mean, this this is what they do. It's called cremation of care. So cremation of care, what does that mean? It means getting rid of your, the, your, your ability to care. And a lot of these people are brought up in satanic families where they are abused from the moment they're born and they, and they have no choice. And, you know, with the, with the R childs, they, you know, ale allegedly they, they, they have millions and millions of test tubes and they, they just, they, they allow the most psychopathic ones into the family and just destroy the rest. You know, I mean, the, the the experiments and stuff they do on the ground and everything. I and mean, this is the biggest military operation in history that we're sitting through without realizing it. And the biggest sting operation in history. And we're seeing the end of their reign. And I think we actually won this multidimensionally uh, already. And we're watching it play out. And that's where we've got to get to. What we've got to do now is process all that information live our best life, live in service. I mean, the law of one says if you if you live in service most of the time, then you're going to be okay with the ascension process. Otherwise, it's going to be a very painful journey for you. But we are here for you. You know, that's the point. You know, it's not that we're special. It's just that there's, a, there's hundreds of thousands of people around the earth doing a similar thing who have insights uh, into this situation and are doing their best to create um, a, a safety net for people when they go through the trauma of, of understanding what's really happened in this world. Mark, on that note, um, I think we'll, I was going to say leave on a high, <laughs> complete <laughs> opposite of a high, but no, I think it's wonderful. Um, I think it's fantastic that us guys have got to a certain age and we seem to have works and some stuff out is massive credit to you and you, um, you know you. and everybody watching you know anybody even watching this is, is doing the work you know yes exactly and they could be watching coronation street and you know yeah get off that shit yeah exactly and so big 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 credit to you too friends so Mark, stay on the line just so I can thank you properly when I've played us out um, we'll put all your links below uh, look forward to having another chat with you. Um, yeah, anytime. I'd love. To. Yeah, it's been great talking. Yeah, about. it's it's great to bounce things um, back and forward. Friends out there, if you could please like and subscribe, that would be wonderful. I'm asking everyone if they'll support our Patreon for one ninety nine a month or become a YouTube member for one ninety nine a month. Um, Less than a cup of coffee. Yeah, less than a cup of coffee. Plus, um, you get, where is it? Let me show you. Look, you get to come to our uh, bushcraft weekend. There's Chrissy in the background there. There's Nige doing his stuff. Or you get I want to come to the next one. Yeah, anyone that supports me, Mark, gets VIP tickets to all my events, so they don't pay anything. This one, we had to pay a little bit of 
uh, camping costs, but it was insignificant. Um, that's great, folks. And if you want the un- uncensored stuff, that's locals. That's that's where we go and speak on uh, locals. So that's it, Mark. We'll put your links below. Let's chat soon. Stay on the line. I'm coming straight back to you. Much Cheers. love, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark.